96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the host are own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning this morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Thursday, the 24th of October, 2024, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. I've got another full show today, but let's start the shipping news. This November, the Nassau Guardian is celebrating 180 years, and we want to thank you our loyal readers, for helping to make this one of the oldest newspapers in the region. We want you to be a part of our Vision Challenge giveaway promotion. Beginning October 28th through November 22nd, all you need to do is find the hidden Nassau Guardian 180 Years logo printed every day in the Nassau Guardian newspaper, and you could win prize money. Just purchase your daily Nassau Guardian newspaper Purchase it every day, beginning Monday, October 28th. Find the hidden 180th Nassau Guardian logo. Cut out the page, mark the spot, write your name and phone number on that clipping. Drop off your entries at our offices on Carter Street in Oaksfield. And every Friday, November 1st, November 8th, November 15th, and 22nd, one drawing will take place to pick the lucky winner. It's that simple. The Nassau Guardian Anniversary Vision Challenge giveaway is about to begin. Okay, you heard that song? We start the show with That's the Booger Man by Ancient Man. You may have guessed it already. I'm trying to build a Halloween playlist. I may not be here on Halloween. I may be involved in official Halloween duty. Yes, it is exciting, ma'am. I'm teething people cheering candy. <laughs> Sorry. Forgive me. I'll be procuring <laughs> parcels of pastries and deliciousnesses <laughs> that y'all think only little children deserve. <laughs> Us grown people deserve it, too. But Halloween is coming. A lot of little housekeeping notes before I get the show started. First things first. There's an improv practice if you are interested in improv, if you are interested in talking foolishness on the fly, listen, there's a new improv group forming. We're going to be meeting. When I say we, I can be on the outskirts. I, I, oh, I'm like 15% gay, 60% critical thinking, 40% misery, and 15% PLP math. Okay, that comes 100%? And 75%. <laughs> that's the PLP math part. But the point is, tonight... Dundas, Black Box, seven in improv acting. If you're interested in comedy, drama, any type of improv acting, come check out the Dundas Black Box tonight at 7.30. Sessions are being led by Jason Evans, a.k.a. artist Javan, a.k.a. the creator of yes. Chris Combusus, mm -hmm. the original story of Christopher Columbus's. Okay, some more housekeeping notes. I got to say happy birthday to another one of Bernard Green's grandchildren, Aiden Lambert. Aiden Lambert is my nephew. He's such a conscientious and thoughtful young man. He's artistic, he's smart, he's community minded. And he's far away from me because he don't live in the Bahamas. This I'm crying because I miss him, but most of all, that's one less child chocolate I could procure. But to my nephew, Aiden, happy birthday. Also, 
Today is International Safe Abortion Day. Today is International Safe Abortion Day. And I know that that's a pretty contentious subject matter in the country generally when we talk about abortion. Uh, and I want you all to understand something, right? right? Like we all have a sort of response to the issue as, as critical thinkers, right? Like what would have happened if I was aborted? That's a, a reasonable question to ask. It's just as a part of your critical thinking process. Anyway, listen, it is International Safe Abortion Day. And if you look at today's headlines, like this one, grandfather accused of molesting granddaughter for four years. If you remember the story I read about the perpetrator who impregnated his girlfriend's daughter who said, I didn't think it would be this big of a deal. I didn't think I would get into so much trouble. There are more headlines. Teen. I mean, it's the same story, I guess. My nightmare over sex attacked by grandfather. If you take the time to consider some of the issues that have been raised through the occurrence of incidents in our community, you understand why even if you don't agree with abortions, if it's not something that you would do with your body, you understand why people are advocating for it and why being a space for conversation. That's it, right? Okay, Couple, one more note. I want to apologize to the residents of Inagua. I in Nassau. I forget may go on exist the other day. And so I want to apologize because I did not know that residents in Anagua, some were trapped in their homes post Oscar since Sunday. Really, really? News stories yesterday covered the, went down to Anagua and showed the one pump. And Jen, if I could find, a, if I could remember the quote, a six inch pump with six inch pipe, pumping water from three miles in from the ocean out to the sea. And so to those residents in Inagua, if you listen, and I hope you're listening, Russ, just Rao, 242 300 It's a toll-free number for Family Island residents. I want to say, I'm sorry. I want to say, because I would have made some noise about it. If I know y'all had only had one pump with one six-inch pipe. I mean, maybe you have more six-inch pipe, but what does it matter if you only got one pump? You imagine that. Thank God it wasn't a fire. I don't know if y'all even have a fire truck down there. However, however, we must always remember that in the archipelago, there must be equal and equitable access to national resources, to state resources. They deserve it. The state has an obligation to ensure it. And you can't talk about it. I don't know why these people who live so far away, that's where they were born. That's where the home is. That's where they live. In response, we don't know why you always take up the job of governing if you don't really want to govern. Anyway, OK. Oh, boy. Dear Texter, yes. OK. The Texter says that he suspects that several women that he knows are addicted to certain types of contraceptives or, or abortion tools, use the word plan B. Mm. And so another conversation that should take place, right, because we have to talk about it, but that a handful of people are doing that does not mean that every single woman should lose access to that type of autonomy over their body. Mm. It's something that we have to talk about and ultimately, I am working towards creating an environment where fewer women have to consider the question of abortion. Mm -hmm. That's my position. Anyway, I've got some guests in studio today. I'm very excited because joining me today is Michael Forbes, AKA the artistic accountant. When she was here before, she was Michael Forbes, the writer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today she is Michael Forbes, the player, uh -huh. and we have a guest joining her in studio. They have come to talk to us about the affair. <laughs> <laughs> 
See, now, when people talk about, about um, same-sex marriage, right, all the gay people who are marriage, and, 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 you always get the whole thing wrong. I can tell you, I have 40% misery. I can't even qualify for marriage at this point. I mean, you, you gotta work on you, yourself. You can, you can always qualify for marriage, Aaron. But always. I'm jealous, <laughs> because only married people could have affairs. Um, <laughs> no, there's single people who, what they do? What they call it? Just cheating? They call just them entanglements and entanglement. dalliances. I don't want, right. I want a proper <laughs> affair. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so the second person in the room, I don't know if she is an actress. Yes. I don't know if she's in production. I don't know, but I'm going to get her to introduce herself right now. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, Aaron. Thanks for having us on the show. My name is Corel Pinder, and I am the writer yes. and co-producer of this. Corel is actually the, the writer right. of okay. this stage play, The Affair. I know people, I am a playwright, but my mentor and friend, Corel, has written The Affair. I am the director. She's directing. Michaela Forbes is the director and co-producer of The Affair. Yeah, because the last time we spoke, yes. you were talking about how your relationship with faith yes. drives your creative yes. work, right? Yes. And so yes. I'm saying, but the church should be the people talking about yes. affairs. Yes, I agree. Yes. They're the, they affair, the affair police. Exactly, exactly. The church should, yes. Okay, anyway, so after looking at the census data yesterday, I realized two things. I may have to sign up for duty. Oh. Yeah. First of all, yeah. uh, marriage is on the decline. Mm. Wow. I may just have to get married for the numbers. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just to help the numbers. But second of all, I heard that the birth rate has declined. Mm. I'm prepared to sign up. You're prepared to sign up for... Uh, because it seemed like it's important, like it's a no, national it duty. It is important. Anyway, I just... Because since we're talking about affairs, mm -hmm. I just want to let these young women know, <laughs> when I gather my crew and we sign up for duty... Don't get upset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't get upset. Mm -hmm. You had your chance, and now we have our chance again. <laughs> okay, ladies, but tell us about this play, The, the affair. affair. Go ahead, Corel. So the Affair. Yeah, you have to speak right into the right mic. Right into the mic. Okay, so The Affair is a new production. The synopsis of the story is this young lady, her name is Tiffany, mm -hmm. and she's about to celebrate her 40th birthday. So we're super excited for her 40th birthday party. But during the party and leading up towards the party, secrets... Um, are starting to unravel and they threaten to not only ruin the party, but ruin much more. And so the much more of what may be ruined or talked about or what may be seen, you'll have to come to the play to see. But that's yes. kind of the synopsis mm -hmm. of the play. So basically it's a show that's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about marriage. It's about um, faith. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of scandal and uh -huh. drama. <laughs> yes. So she loves. Um, and it's a lot of relatable topics. A lot of things that we see in our society today and a lot of things like you said you know earlier that the church may not talk about but they need to talk about because yeah. the church has an opinion on it yeah. and having that conversation and more than just an opinion right yeah so like from say from my perspective people say from your perspective Aaron it's only an opinion okay cool right but for members of the church mm -hmm. right they turn to the church as to be a guide right f right for a resource mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. hey here's this situation I'm facing in many instances my participation in church life will help me find yeah. the answers I need. Yeah. But mm -hmm. sometimes we need to go to somebody, we need a word yeah. mm -hmm. to say, hey, we see what you're dealing with yes. and here are ways that you, you can, can move forward. Yeah, yes. you can move forward. Yes. Okay, yeah. so the affair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how she said it. She's like, <laughs> so like, help, me, help me to understand <laughs> the affair. That's what's happening here. All right, because when we say the affair, it could be political intrigue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be romantic intrigue yeah right it could be a generational secret that's woven itself so tightly around family members yeah. that they're gonna burst right they could so just give them a little snapshot it could be a lot of things uh -huh. also uh, the affair could be an event a, a party a party a party you absolutely right it's an event it could be the soiree the affair. yes the soiree. it's the affair okay. it's the party now let me tell you why I am super because Dion Johnson is in it. Yes. Now, Dion Johnson is one of our country's leading actors. Yes. He recently did a tour in, I think, in Bravo. Europe. Yes. Mm. With the Shakespeare, Shakespeare in Paradise. Oh, he was with them. He did. He did. Right. They okay. did an ex well, so he did Shakespeare in Paradise, I think, but they had an exchange program, right? Yes. In Europe. Yes. In Europe. Yes. And so, and then I know Dion from The Spot. Mm. Thoughtcatcher presents The Spot, The Spot, The Spot 242. Uh, Dion is just one of the funniest men in the country. <laughs> he is very, very funny and he is an awesome actor. Absolutely. He's, he's a lead, act, lead what actor. What he's do? What he's, what he's doing the play, man? 
Oh, I, can, I mean, I cannot divulge what he does in the play, but, but I can know. tell you. But I can tell you some background. So I'm from Grand Bahama originally. Okay. So I've been re- writing plays since 2014. Yeah. And so this is I moved to Nassau two years ago. Okay, pause one second. Yeah. Just a note for the next lit- National Literary Month. We need to have Grand Bahama Voices, New Providence, play oh, right, listen, play right listen, listen, uh, listen now, listen. Corel loves like that. She just did a, a competition, Grand Bahama versus yeah. New Providence. We, we, did, we have a competition at Star, Star Film Institute where we do that, where we, <laughs> we bring playwrights and we bring filmmakers and they do their projects and it launched in March. I would say that Grand Bahama is one of the, lead, the leading when it comes to playwrights, but mm-hmm. in our competition... This year, the person who did win, she was a playwright from Nassau. Okay. Who won it? But come on now. Come on. And Grand Bahama (laughs) won the film. Yeah, Grand Bahama won the film drama. But Mm. yeah, so back to Dion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have never casted in Nassau. I have shown plays in Nassau. So we've done plays from 2014 and brought them over to Nassau to showcase, but we bring the entire cast. We may have a cameo here and there from an actor, but literally we bring the whole cast. So casting here was a little nerve wracking for me because I don't know the actors. And I tell people (laughs) all the time, I cast on three things. You have to look the part. I have to be able to sell you. Marketing is a big part of it. So I'm marketing from your, your auditioning. Um, you have to have skill and talent. Like you have to have acting ability. Mm -hmm. And the third one is you have to have loyalty Mm -hmm. because it's a lot of commitment to be in a play. And I know I just can say Dion, he looked like he could, he could afford a party. You're calling a (laughs) fair. I can't even call my party a tea party. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. He so looked, he definitely he definitely looked the part. He definitely he had has acting a, skills. He has the stature of a statesman, right? So he it does. could be a political affair. Uh, he does. And, and he's you, a little handsome. He, but, yeah. So I can sell it. Sell right. It. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it has to go. <laughs> so the, the funny thing about it is, again, I've never worked with Dion. I met him first at the Star Film Institute because you talked about improv. Yeah, yeah. And so host, and he did like, he was like, can you do a little game or something? And I was like, okay. So he had Dion and another actor from Grand Bahama come on stage and they had to basically do like jeers at each other yeah, 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 yeah. the improv jeers but they had to do it by the alphabet it was so mm-hmm. funny it, it was, was brilliant so I was like they're not going to think of the next letter in the alphabet and think so of a jeer at the same time that's the type of thing Dion so Johnson yes. have you doing in practice yes. they were amazing like yeah. they killed it they went through the whole alphabet Listen. Hold on, I, I'm supposed to have the Royal Bahamas Police Force on next week to talk about their crime plan, right? And Dasquay made the best cr- anti-crime PSA ever in a spot practice. Wow. So it's like his first time coming to a spot practice, and like the last time, I think in that moment he realized he had what it took, right? Right. We are thieves, like three of us are thieves, and we break in into a house. And we get into the house, uh-huh. and Dasquay say he have to go because he... He don't know what happened, but he have a sudden bout of gas in his elbow, <laughs> and he have to go. And I want to say, dear young people, you need to get on off a scene. Like when you open your eyes and you realize you are not where you were supposed to be. You tell them, look here, I don't know what happened, but I have gas in my uh-huh. armpit and I go home before I spool up myself. I okay. spot, it just amazes me. I am <laughs> not an improv person. So with yes, 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 So yes. with Dion coming with that improv background, the comedy background, mm-hmm. I told Michael I'm nervous. So the play is a dramedy. So there's a lot of drama drama mm-hmm. and yeah. there's some comedy throughout it. Yes. yes. But it's not comedy all the way through. Like there are parts where I'm gonna need you to really know that the actor is sincere or yes. that I need you to take it seriously. Like sometimes yes. Bohemians laugh at uncomfortable situations. Yes. yes. And I need at some, we needed at some point them to take him. And so I was like, Michael, I uh-huh. loved him. He was great. He even made me laugh. Yes. But is he gonna make me laugh the whole time? And she was like, Trust me. I, said, I yeah. assure you, he is one of the See, best like actors in the Bahamas. Even though he's funny, he can zoom into serious and he can zoom into that character. Yeah, because yes. see when you do improv, you the audience is your register, right? And so we know. Like, you know the difference between an uncomfortable laugh and a I sorry audience, I forget I was with other people laugh. Mm. And so, like, and Dion is very good of, at that, at reading the temperature of the audience and causing the whole stage to move in a the different shift. direction. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Michael had worked with him yes, before. I worked so with him before. I seen him on stage many times, and I said, "Dion, me and you know, we're together at some point." He also comes to auditions. I, I was surprised he said he was not doing something. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. well, everybody <laughs> want him. Yeah. Okay. So we can't give Dion all the spotlight. Yes, no. we can't. We let's, cannot. Let's go through some of the other cast members. Mm-hmm. Um, key production, like the person who in charge of the lights. <laughs> FYI, don't get the person in charge of the lights upset or the person in charge of the mics upset. The no. mics. You tell your sweetest <laughs> joke and ain't nobody heard it, buddy. Yes. Okay, the cast and crew and then location, time, cost. 
Okay, so I'm going to go through our cast members. We have Olivia Dorsett, who also comes from Grand, Grand Bahama. Bahama. Yes. <laughs> we have Hartman Brown. We have Nicole Musgrove, Chavana Roll, Giovanna, Chavana Roll, Giovanna Heburn, and Nesta Smith. This is our cast. Okay. Okay. And How many of those names are male? Two. Two, two, two males. males. Two males it, and two the rest females. It reflects social yes. dynamics where we have mm. like seven to one, women to men, something like that. I think you just see them in different spaces. I think we have a lot of men. It's just that they're in different spaces. Mm, yeah. I think so. I mean, I, I want to tell you, look here, that's, <laughs> so, a that's so many <laughs> jokes right in there. Yeah. I, think I mean, do. I could see why I don't see them <laughs> in the space I be in. So that's what I mean. They're yeah, in different I, spaces. Anyway, gentlemen, on that note, yeah. if you read the article, marriages mm-hmm. decline, divorces and legal mm-hmm. separations up, or the article population growth rate declines, gentlemen, if there are more women than men, <laughs> We're going to need you to sign up. Now, to be honest with you, Father Walking is saying, come sign up at the church first. Come bring your wife and you all sign up together to make babies, please. Don't yeah. follow Aaron and just sign up on your own. Okay, cost. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, hold on. First of all, I see this flyer that say one night, night only. only. No. That's only. how hot this play is? One only. night only. One night. Okay. So we have it at Bahamas Harvest. So it's a Bahamas Harvest, November 2nd. Okay. Um, tickets are available at Bahamas Harvest. They're also available online. They're $40 for general, $60 for VIP. The one night only. Bahamas Harvest seats 700 seats. So our goal is to fill those seats. So if we, we know you really want to be there, if we fill 700 seats, then we can think about is there going to be an encore or What's more. Next? But look the- about perspective. Because yeah. I'm sitting here wondering, why would y'all let a church take over a movie theater space that mm-hmm. you could convert into a new movie theater business, right? Mm-hmm. But it's 700 seats. 700 yeah, seats. As a past, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and Bahamas have a They're still building. 700 seats on they, their worship. They have two to three seats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they, they broadcast out so you could live stream yes, in. Yes, you could live you stream. Could yeah. virtual, mm-hmm. You could virtual the boy. Yes. Yeah. Dear young people, you could virtual the boy now. Yes, yes. the demand is there. <laughs> All right, so one night only. What is that night? When is the play going to be hosted? It's going to be next Saturday, November 2nd at 8 p.m. at Bahamas Harvest. Come out. You don't want to miss this. As Erin was talking about, she's talking about marriages are on a decrease, divorces on the rise. We are gonna we're gonna talk about all of these topics in the affair. Mm-hmm. If you like plays, you are going to love this play. If you're not sure, come on out because guess what? We're gonna convert you that night. Mm-hmm. See you there, November second, eight p.m. Tickets are online and at Bahamas Harvest. So they can go on Facebook to the affair or Instagram. All right, where do I find that QR code? So it's on, uh, it's on the flyer that you can find on Facebook or mm-hmm. Instagram, or you could Google Island Dreams Management, The Affair, and it'll come up. It's the okay. thing that'll yes. come up. All right. So yes. listen, you talk about legal separations. <laughs> legal separations also increased by 75.6% Wow. from 2,956 in 2010. To 5,190 wow. in 2020. That's, that's the COVID year. I want to say that. That's the same but it, year I it, got. But <laughs> increased from 2010. Is that, is that, yes. is that the year? No, well, it's 2020. 20, that 2022 is, would be, we would be right at the tail of end of the wow. lockdown yes. situations yes. and things. I, I find this these stats really interesting, right? But I have a bias. So my bias drives my a part of my insertion into the conversation. Okay. I think that we are a society that solves problems with money. Mm. Right? And I think that when people have intimate partner and interpersonal conflict, the what we have been socialized to believe is that the easiest and most effective response to that mm. conflict is to my own space. Yep. Where I could yes. think what I want and do yes. what I want and be what I want and, and not worry about how I make you feel or yes. how you feel around me. Mm-hmm. And I think this is ve- has been very problematic as it's been entrenched deeper and deeper into our culture. Yeah. Because we're now at a place where we have a housing crisis, mm. right? Because there is a limitation on developed land and housing inventory, like existing housing stock. Mm-hmm. And then there's a tension between the Bahamian and the second home. Mm-hmm. And then there's a tension between the Bahamian and the tourist, uh, the tourist product that is always looking for more space. Right. And then because of the, ex- the existing housing inventory shortage, there's a tension between Bahamians and migrants who are here legally, mm. right?
right? And mm -hmm. so, you know, the law says that the, the, an, um, uh, housing must be established as part of the, you, know, you, you need to know where these people are living and must right. be yes. safe and approved. Yes. And so there's a tension, all of these things. And then on top of that, we have uh, these cultures where, so watch this, I think it's relevant to the affair. <laughs> this thing where we say two women can't live in the same house. Yep. Mm. We have taken that to mean the daughters must leave their mummy house to be adult women. Mm. But I think we have forgotten the uh, influx of culture with the enslavement of Africans mm. and the Muslim, Muslim cultures and other African cultures that had um, multiple wives. Yep. And so I think that saying is not about mothers and daughters or children and parents, but about uh, polygamy. Polygamy. Oh, polygamy. Oh. Polygamy. Oh, polygamy. Like if, you have a, if you have a house, they own wow. compound, right? Yeah. So anyway, all of, all of these things, right? And people are realizing that they cannot afford the autonomy that is in their head. <laughs> they cannot they afford it. They can't afford it. <laughs> right. The mm -hmm. way that they think they cannot afford to think that way. Mm -hmm. And so too many people are paying mortgages. Too many people are paying rent. rent. Mm -hmm. uh, and too many people are not living in economically effective living situations. Mm -hmm. I've heard that saying of two women cannot be in the same house in regards to, to telling men not to move in their wife into the house with their their parents, their, their mother, because then there's a tension there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, if them. anything happens, there's a tension that they have to kind of to manage. So just leave them separate. Because sometimes women, we are full of emotions, full of estrogen, and we can, you know, yeah, try to, you know, <laughs> right. Yes. And but but you you learn that right. Yes. You, as children it, living in extended family situations, you learn how people all have authority. We all have varying degrees of authority. But you learn how people who are like on the same lateral plane, we all have the same type of authority. How do we interact with each other? Mm -hmm. How do we respect each yes. other's authority? So now when we come to things like affairs, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. again, now the audience, the people ain't tell me exactly <laughs> that what is kind of affair, affair. <laughs> of affair many you will see in this play. It's many kind. So I just imagine, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Uh, but the way that affairs mm -hmm. work as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's because of spatial, like how we operate with spatial awareness yeah. mm -hmm. and intimacy, non-sexual intimacy yes. in communities, mm -hmm. because how come so many people fall in love with their partner's relative, right? Somebody that has proximity yeah, to the relationship closeness. or yep. to their mm -hmm. immediate community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. I think because a lot of us are selfish. We're selfish. We're self-centered. And so instead of leaning into conflict management or how can I grow or how can I be better or like you're doing something that I don't like. But mm -hmm. instead of using it as an opportunity to have conflict management for you to grow and for me to grow, I want the easy, the easiest way out. And the easiest way out is something that's going to lead to my comfort mm -hmm. or to me mm -hmm. feeling better about yes. myself versus what's going to make me grow versus yes. what's going to quickly ease the pain. Because yes. mm -hmm. growing is uncomfortable. Right. Having those uncomfortable conversations with your spouse. Because here would be here people say with affairs, she made me do it, baby. Mm -hmm. She showed me herself she made right and that's the position we like to take mm -hmm. the other person made me do it because if you if you take the reverse position which is so you have to be accountable. accountable what you did i realized i felt something mm -hmm. you did something all by yourself right and i had not you made me feel no there was something in me already my response to what you did was anger that mm -hmm. causes you to have to reflect yeah. on mm -hmm. internally, right? Mm -hmm. Turn on self and say, okay, why did I have this response when they did that? As opposed to, well, it's their fault. It's their fault, right. Because <laughs> the women them know when they don't wear no clothes, mm -hmm. us man can't control mm -hmm. it. As opposed to saying, you know what, my love, to be honest with you, yes. I realize in, you know, I realize now yeah. that in that moment, I was trying to satisfy yes. a deep desire for intimacy with you that I was in, could never tell you about because I don't ever want to be that vulnerable. Ah. Vulnerability is the key. And if you open up, if you open up to your partner, you'd be surprised the forgiveness that you may receive. If you come and you say, "Hey, this is what is going on with me, and I'm sorry," and you, but a lot of people don't want to have that conversation You're with their partner. Of vulnerability. Yes, yeah. the vulnerability yeah. is definitely key. 
and accepting the responsibility in yourself that yes, it was something inside of you why you had the affair. It had nothing to do with any other external factors. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So with owning and having. So I'm not saying that the affair is a. <laughs> we're not saying it's an moment. affair. We're not even saying an affair right. is in a fit. In, in, in the affair, right? <laughs> it's a party. But it's definitely a party. The role of the playwright <laughs> yeah. in society is so important. Yes. Because the playwright reflects the lived experiences of people in a in, in a way that we can look at it collectively. Uh -huh. Right. So on the play because we all are watching we all sit in front of the same stage. Yes. Right? It, which it's a different experience from watching a movie where you will relate to the movie individually, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's a collective experience. Even hearing the things that people say in the audience. I think that's what I love yes, about live, live. theater mm -hmm. because you have an experience because there's you have an experience because there's someone next to you. Mm -hmm. I remember I did a play a few years ago and it touched on um, a lot of, you know, sensitive topics and someone a gentleman in the bathroom and he was crying. Mm -hmm. because of something that moved him yeah, right because of his own experience that he was having. Yes. But even just going into the restroom and seeing him crying, that developed another experience with that person. So live yes. theater creates a different kind of experience in a movie because like you said, it's not just individual. It's what are people Collective. responding to mm -hmm. while yes. they see it on stage. And you can have a play um, many different nights and the experience be different. The audience is yeah. different. And Absolutely. Yes. Producer, I forget I'm supposed to be playing the music. I got two songs there by Avi. <laughs> You, I, I, I like to play the second one, the newer one. But everybody know the older one. If you know Avi, and you know what we talking about, mm -hmm. then you may know what song I talking about. But I can let the producer decide because I got questions for you. Do you have Bahamian music in the play? Do we have Bahamian music in the play? Because when I hear Ronnie Butler say, "By the time I get to Phoenix," <laughs> the songs I fall yes. in love every time. Yes. Okay, let's listen to this song, guys. No problem. Just sign in and have a seat, please. They'll call you in for your x ray shortly. That's why they call it a waiting room. You won't have that problem at Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center or Imaging at Groner. We never schedule multiple appointments, so you'll be in and out in no time. And if your initial screening reveals a concern, our radiologist can conduct an alternative screening right then and there. Call 328-8157 to schedule an appointment at 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center or Imaging at Grosvenor today. Girl, you see how Cora eye look funny all black up yesterday? But she say she bump into a wall when she's running after the churn them. Yeah, but last Saturday you see her arm was all black and blue, right? What you saying? You think something warm between her and Jack? I ain't sure, but you know Jack is a jealous man. I hear him and Cora last Friday. I hear him say he hear Cora have eyes for Junior. Now you know that ain't true. Cora is a good woman. Does mind her business, take care of them churn and go to church every Sunday. So what you think we should do? I think we should report Jack, you know. Cora don't say nothing, but silence hides violence. And we don't want to line up in the cemetery. Nothing. Jack come after me and I line up next to Cora. No, man, we could call a text crime stopper. And remember, we can even get some grocery money for our tip. Remind me again how does this work? We can call them in Miami at 328 tips or 328 8477. Or when we in the island, call toll free at 300 tips or 300 8477. And if you don't have no minutes, use the crack crime Bahamas app and we could text them. And the messages get on mix up, mix up before it leave your phone so nobody can know what you're saying. So we wait. Waiting on then, let's go earn some grocery money. Unequal gender nationality law is a violation of human rights and a failure of the government to meet its obligations. In 2018, the CEDAW committee told the Bahamas to set a clear time frame for constitutional reform, to integrate the principle of gender equality into all laws, and to amend the Bahamas Nationality Act 1973 for Bahamian women and men to transmit citizenship on an equal basis. Join Equality Bahamas in demanding action now. Visit tiny.cc slash nationality for more. 
reliable and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that is second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to Located life. Located in the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. No matter who I marry, no matter where my wife gives birth, our children will be Bahamian, like me. If I marry a man who's not Bahamian, I have to give birth in the Bahamas, or my children won't even be Bahamian like I am. That don't even make sense. That's why we had the referendum in 2016. But the people vote no. The government can still do something about it with ordinary legislation. And it needs to develop an action plan and timeline to hold another referendum to deal with gender inequality in the Constitution. How we can make that happen? Go to tiny.cc backslash nationality to support the campaign for equal nationality rights by Equality Bahamas. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Now she says she's gonna be a mother. Her father comes to straighten the thing. That's when the wedding bell starts to ring. Here comes the bride. Good morning and welcome back to On The Clock with Erin Green. So when I was putting together a Bahamian playlist for Halloween, I was thinking about scary situations or things <laughs> that may be scary to Bahamians. That's how Shotgun Wedding get on the playlist. Shotgun. That's how I Ain't Going Home by Avi get on the playlist. If I say, I don't know, all these ducks are on the lawn like grass in my yard. I don't need to go home. Because uh, he went and when he say that this man drunk hot dog's house, I know that mean Rowan. A lot of men scared? Scared of conflict. That the home, the place that's supposed to be the safest is going to be the roughest place, right? The, less, the least safe place. Talking about safe places, I uh, am aware of the peripherally the story coming out of Grand Bahama yesterday where a care, a residential care facility owner or part of management is purported to, has allegedly, has allegedly uh, attained the power of attorney for one of the clients, and it is being alleged that through that contractual relationship, the owner has allegedly assumed control of the, the client's home, hmm. right? It's Older Persons Month. We're coming to the end of it, October Awareness Month. And this is a tragic situation. That when people are at their most vulnerable, they must be able to rely on systems to protect them and the vulnerable yes. people that they are charged with protecting. Yes. Uh, I just want to turn to the census for a second, uh, Ms. Forbes. The part that says aging population. As for age distribution of the population, the number of people under the age of 15 decreased from 94,119 in 2010 to 86, sorry, 89,768 in 2022. The number of people between 15 and 64 increased from 200. 34,744 in 2010 to 280,671 in 2022. The data also showed that the number of people 65 and older increased from 21,629 in 2010 to 21, sorry, 27,726 in 2022. Now, Ms. Forbes. Mm-hmm. Old people is fall in love too. Oh yeah, old people thirties or your forties, having your fifties, sixties, or seventies, eighties is never too late to fall in love. You know, if it's your first time getting married, you st if that's your desire. Keep listen. Also, keep. it's it's never too <laughs> late to work on your core strength. Oh. My sixty five and older. So when you fall in love, you don't trip and break. Okay. Your oh skull. yes, get out there, work out, um, eat eat right, do do everything. Are any 
older members of our community involved in the affair? Because they like to pretend like they don't get in trouble. They only be at Bible study on Wednesday night. There's, I mean, actually, that's a funny story because we actually have a, a character. She's an older lady. She mm. is about 70. Her name is Mama Lou. However, we casted a very, very young girl to play that part. And we have to like kind of transform her into an older lady because we didn't get anybody to come any older person in acting to actually come out to the casting. Like, I have the right amount yes. of misery, but I don't have the right amount of acting See? skills. So, so even if you're in your 60s, we need you to come out to casting calls. We need you. Mama Lou needed you, but we had to... Right. And yes. so so to the community yes. of older people... Yes, we the, still need you. The, the play world, the stage yes, world... the creative world still needs you. If that is your If that is your gift, come on out to differing casting calls. And even if it's not your gift yet, but you think you may want to develop a skill, yes. come out and check it yes. out. Yes, definitely. And so just back to that story in Grand Bahama, I just learned that residents of the community are currently and actively protesting. They're staging a demonstration in front of the, I think, the care home, in front mm. of one of the locations, one of the buildings in this story. Yes. Uh, I would say stay tuned to Guardian Radio News for updates on that matter. Now, net migration. So mig uh, migration mm -hmm. and island population is another part of the census. And uh, they do have a portion on increase in church membership. Hmm. So let me ask you, mm -hmm. are any of the characters in this play from the family islands? Well, as, as we already said... The affair is Tiffany's grand birthday affair, and she has family coming coming over from every island, Exuma, Eleuthera, Grand Bahama, and Andrus. She has family coming over for her grand birthday, 40th birthday affair from every island. Right. So I imagine that yes. the culture of that island will be infused in that character, and they all bring something different to the affair. Yes. What they bring in from Mayaguano? Oh, my gosh. I hear they only have <laughs> sea grape in Mayaguano and Lignum Whitey. From the all different parts, they're bringing definitely the the, pine, the pineapple tart, everything to bring to Tiffany's grand affair. So for Luthera, the pineapple. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. He's coming from Ragged Island to bring I us up know, some tamarind. I know, anybody coming from Ragged Island. I know, Erin, but mm, that's a good thought. We should put a Ragged yeah, Island listen, and Mayaguana in there. <laughs> producer, I got one song on the list called Boat Pull Out by George Simonette, right? And the song is about the boat pulling out of Nassau Harbor. And I realized when boat was the, the primary, if not only, means of travel, unless he was Eddie Minnis Grammy, who mm -hmm. was flying when they put that bush in her pipe, mm -hmm. right? That missing the boat is a big horror story, buddy. Mm -hmm. Missing the boat. Right? Missing the boat mm -hmm. could upset your plans forever. Literally and figuratively. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so I just want to read this from... Uh, an, Another Guardian story about the census, non-denominational now among top three religions in Bahamas. Mm. The leading Christian denominations in the Bahamas are Baptists, Anglicans, and non-denominational groups, mm. according to data from the census. Previously, Roman Catholics were among the top three denominations. Bud Kimberly Roll, assistant director of the Bahamas National Statistical Institute, said... Data from the latest census showed a shift. Historically, the three, quote, historically, the three main religious denominations were Baptists, Anglicans, and Roman Catholics, mm. close quotes. Uh, she said, quote, however, the 2022 census data reveals that there was a shift. The three main denominations are now Baptist, Anglican, and non-denominational. Mm. In 2022, 22, 135,874 people identified as Baptists, mm -hmm. compared to 22,500. For Anglicans, it was 47,454 people identified as Anglican, compared to 48,006. And there were 35,296 people listed as non denominational in 20. 22. Mm. The Roman Catholic denomination decreased from 42,287 to 34,748, a 17.8 percent decrease. Mm. That's, that's quite interesting. And I think that goes back to the conversation between religion versus spirituality. You know, I think going from 
you said we have mm -hmm. more non-denominational going from a traditional church or something where you're doing the same thing over and over traditions versus having a personal relationship with Christ and looking for your, your soul to be fed. So we have to bring that into the conversation and figure out, you know, what, what do people need when they come into those four walls? They're looking for a personal revelation, a personal right. relationship with Christ, not just, just tradition. Right. A really interesting analysis, right? Because if the numbers had decreased, right, like with Roman Catholics had decreased, but non-denominational, no, like people haven't given up on faith. They haven't mm -hmm. given up no. on God. Yeah. They've sort of given up on the community. Okay. Yes. Right now, at the same time, these people may go to formal churches that don't align with any traditional denomination, right? And so there are a lot of churches out there. Like, I wonder if when they saw non-denominational, they thought, well... I don't see prophetic, right? I don't see oh apostolic, so mm -hmm. I'll put non-denominational instead. I, I can talk from my experience. I was mm -hmm. Anglican all my life. My mother raised me Anglican. She sent me, even when she couldn't go to, <laughs> I'm not going to call the name, Anglican. She sent me there to get a foundation, and I did that. I got a foundation. But when I grew up, I was looking for something more, something where I could use my gifts, where I could serve in the capacity that the gifts that God gave me. So I looked for a church where I can use my gifts of, mm -hmm. of drama, of writing, and I, and I couldn't do that in, not to the capacity that I wanted to, mm -hmm. in the Anglican church. So I think people are just looking for more. They're looking to be used in the way that God has called them to be used. Well, I don't, I don't know if um, Father Gomez or, or Father Joaquin did tell you this, right? But once you're born an Anglican, <laughs> you're, always, you're Anglican. You always Anglican. My mother said it too. She said that too. I was like, okay, mommy. She's like, sure, sure. Your name's still there. I said, mommy, okay. But <laughs> so um, national census, I, a, a statistical institute. I think there's a cultural element that y'all may have missed out in these numbers. Because Father Walking will tell you, count it again. Count it again. Count it again. Count it again. Let's, <laughs> producer, let's go to the phone line quickly, and then we're going to play another song. Want to call her? Good morning, Aaron. I guess. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I, I, I share our sentiments uh, exactly because I grew up Anglican as well. I went to Anglican school, everything. Mm -hmm. but, uh, when it, but when you get older, you, your mind starts to change. And, and you try to look for something more, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I went to a non denominational church as well. Okay. Okay, awesome. Yes. All right. Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much. And that, uh, that more you. is different for everybody. Right. And more is different for everybody. And I think the most important thing and the most important thing for church leaders to try to understand is whether someone let go of God and faith or whether someone desired more from yes. their fellowship yes. and their community, yes. right? Because then the church could step in and create, create that space. new spaces, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, I could see the Anglican, okay, like the ba the Baptist community, they re vitalized or reignited their sports federation. Yes. They created a new space and it should be a particularly good space for for young people, right? Mm -hmm. Capturing young people through sports mm -hmm. in an environment where they will also be entrenched in these principles, right? Of yeah. the Baptist church. And I think it's key. Change is the key because the the children are the future. So figure out what uh, is going to keep them. Yeah. So figure out what's going to keep your young people as they're growing up in this church actually in the in the church right. as they will leave and find an another church if that space is not there. Absolutely. Um, what's also interesting, the article population growth rates decline, right? Some islands saw population increases and some saw decreases, right? Acklands, Andrus, the Berry Islands, Bimini, Cat Island, Eleutheric, Zuma, Harbor Island, and New Providence all registered population gains. Mm. But Abaco, Crooked Island, Grand Bahama, Inagua, Long Island, Mayaguana, Ragged Island, Rumkey, producer, let's take that call. Spanish Wells and San Salvador all saw decreases, decreases. in their population. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Karen. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? That's good. Good morning to your guests, too. Good morning. I'm listening, and this is an interesting conversation. Um, so I, too, can relate to um, your guest, the comment she made a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't born an Anglican. I married into... Um, that denomination, 25 mm -hmm. years. And what I found ironic is my family, my husband, my son, and I, we had to visit another church. Um, I guess they're probably non-denominational. Mm -hmm. And after visiting that, my 17-year-old son said to me, Mommy, 
I think we need to find another church because this message just isn't yes. cutting it. This, mm-hmm. After having visited um, another church. Mm-hmm. And um, so we had to have the conversation as to whether this is meeting his spiritual needs, whether it's meeting mine, whether it's still meeting my husband. Mm-hmm. And yes. unfortunately, uh, my son and I now go to that very church we visited. Mm-hmm. But my husband, I believe, he too is of that belief. Once an Anglican. Always an always Anglican. An Anglican. <laughs> See, would, so he is still there. <laughs> it's not what you believe, it's what God knows. It's what well. Father Joaquin would tell me when I look in his face, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? Thank but you. but it's, thank you so much for sharing that, right? Creating a space because you understand that the young person will have to take up their own Georgie Mantle. bundle at some point. And Producer, we got time for one more Christ. call? Uh, caller, I'm so sorry. We don't have time for another call. This is the last song for today on my Bahamian Halloween playlist. Boat pull out. Okay, as we go, remind us of the details of the play. Next Saturday, November 2nd, 8 p.m., The Affair at Bahamas Harvest Church, 8 p.m. Tickets are online. The QR code, you can Google Island Dream Man- Management, The Affair, and it's $40 for general admission, $60 for VIP. All right, there you go. This is Boat Pull Out, George Simonet. You could imagine if they send you to Nassau to get the KFC when it used to be right by the bridge, and the boat pull out from Nassau, and you didn't get to it with the KFC. You missed the boats. That's a horror story. Anyway, thank you so much, producer. Thank you, Michael thank Forbes, you Aaron, the for having art- me. the artistic accountant, for talking through the play and some of our local issues. It's very interesting. Because this is what plays are all about, yes. reflecting our lived experiences our real life. for us to better understand ourselves. Yes. You guys have a great day. And no, sir, um, no Fox Hill Gal taking that as any excuse. I agree with you. I don't even know what the excuse is. They just ain't taking it. They ain't taking no excuses. At all. You guys have a great day, Guardian Radio AM with C.A. Nuri is up next. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.